Good day, traders. Hedge with High Tech Trading Analysis. Today, I'm going to talk to you about a couple of the toolbars that I offer for NinjaTrader 8. Um, I have a drawing toolbar and a coloring style toolbar. Several months ago, I released a couple videos on the basic versions of both of these. I offer these each individually. But today I want to talk to you about the ultimate version of this package. The first thing that we're going to notice is that we have two toolbars displayed on our chart now. And we'll notice that the top toolbar, we have draw object icons. Very similar to if we click NinjaTrader's toolbar on their draw objects, these represent the same symbols as what NinjaTrader gives you as default. Now, there is a difference between this version and the basic version. The basic version is going to draw the default draw objects from NinjaTrader. In this ultimate version, I am providing custom draw objects in replace of these. And here in just a second, we'll show you um, why I've done that, the benefits and the additional properties that are now available in these draw objects. So simple enough, we click on the line, we click on the chart, we draw a line. Now you'll notice that this line is red and dashed. And that's because I didn't notice that I had the color style toolbar on. If I would have turned that off, drawn that line again, it would draw it with my default NinjaTrader line template. Now, by the use of my color style bar, I can turn this on, change the color, change the width, change the style, click on an arrow, and I'm going to draw that arrow in that color in that style. If I decide now, well, wait a minute, I want that arrow to be blue instead, I can click on blue, come down and click on the arrow so that it's highlighted, click on it one more time, and that will change blue. The reason you have to click on it twice is I don't want to accidentally select this draw object and change it to what this is selected um, without intentionally wanting to do so. So it's not difficult if I want to change this green to red, I select red, select whatever style I want, click on it once, click on it again, and it will be whatever you set in your toolbar. If we turn that off, no matter what we do, nothing will change. Uh, just because I did that, I thought I would show you that real quick. Getting back to the drawing toolbar, uh, we can draw whatever we like. Now, we'll notice that if I double click on this and I look in, at this in my draw objects property box. This is an HT arrow line, not just the default arrow line. If we look over in the properties, we can see quite a few additional properties that we can do with this arrow line. I can extend that arrow line right. So if I click here, I click apply, my line is going to extend to the right. I can extend it to the left. I can show anchor extensions. So if I click on show anchor extensions, click apply, I now from my start to my end point, extend them to the right hand side to show levels. Now, if I come down a little further, I can show price labels for those levels. I can show a midpoint. I can show 50% projections and 100% projections. So let's give you an example of that. 
I'm just going to, instead of redrawing this, I'm going to draw this down to about there. So now I have the levels of maybe what I would be looking at for this current uptrend that we're in, even though we're retracing currently. If I right click on this line, instead of going into the properties, if I select my object, right click, I now have a context menu with those same properties that we just saw in the properties box. If I wanna show 100% projections, which means I went from here to here, if I want to show my 100% projection from that, I turn that on and I can do that. It's labeled because all the labels are on and I'm going to see the 100% projection down below. So we can extend right, extend left, we can show our anchors, we can show the midpoint of that if we'd like. We can show 50% projections and we can show 100% projections. I can adjust that quickly and easily through a right click menu or I can double click, come into the properties and change them there. Um, in the price labels, I also have a tick offset. So this number here, and this would apply to most all of my indicators, um, is the number of ticks that price is away from this line. If you don't want to see those, uncheck that box and turn those off. I can show the range of this, which I, I need to adjust. I need to adjust this just a little bit, but I can see that that's an 83 tick range. Um, it might be difficult to see on your screen. So now, depending on the object you draw is going to depend on the type of properties that are available for it. If we were to come up and draw a ray, and we were to right click on it to show our properties or the feature, what we can do with this, there is no extend right. There's no reason to have an extend right. It's always extended right. So not all objects have the same properties. And I'll continue to expand on what is currently available, but I'll try to go through and show you each one. For instance, if we were to draw a rectangle here, and we right click on that. I can extend that right. I can extend that left. I can do the same thing pretty much with this as I did with this. But if I drew a region, there would be no reason to have extend right and extend left on it. Now, one unique thing about NinjaTrader 8's version over NinjaTrader 7's version is in NinjaTrader 7, I gave you a drop down here with the properties. And when we selected that property, it was all or none. If you had that drop down selected to extend or whatever, every object you drew had to be or was going to be that way unless you changed it. In NinjaTrader 8, because now we've tied the properties back to the object itself, they're all independent. Meaning if I come up and I draw another rectangle, it's just gonna draw a rectangle. It's going to draw whatever I set in my default template. Right now I don't think I have a default template for a rectangle, but if I wanted to, let's just say, I wanted to change the rectangle to red. We'll outline it this way and we'll throw the opacity up a little. I'll click on this, I'll click on this, and I've changed it. Now I wanna right click and extend right, and this is how I wanna draw every rectangle now. I could, at this point, go into the Draw Objects properties, come down to Template, 
say save, name it default save, and then every time that I drew a rectangle, it would automatically, when I drew it through the draw bar, it would automatically draw like this. Now, if you have your color style bar on, you're, you're going to overwrite whatever your default is. Okay, and I guess rather than going through and drawing each of these objects and showing you, um, well, let's let's do one. Let's do just a couple more. If we take our triangle and we left click it to select it, we right click to show the context menus. For a triangle, there's only a couple. I show our ABCs. This would be 100. Well, let's just turn our price labels on. This would be 100, our 127, and our 161.8 A, B, C extensions. And I can show my anchor extensions. I don't believe I have anything for, oh, I do. Um, I, I did get to that. Midpoint, anchor points, probably a 50 and 100% projections. I use ranges a lot in my trading. Again, if I want to change that to a different color, while it's selected, I can come up and select. If it's selected, I can come and change it automatically any way I want. You see that? So what I was saying earlier, if it's not selected and we change this, if we just select it, it's not going to change. It needs to be selected and then I can come up and change that up here or I could have just double, I could have changed that selected it and clicked on it again and that would automatically change. Okay, you're you're also going to notice a couple extra icons, uh, two extra icons over here on the right. These were developed for Kathy Graver over at Structural Trading where she uses harmonics in her trading. And um, let's just get rid of what we have on our chart. And if we take the last one, this is an HTABCD. So this is similar to what we just did with our triangle. Only this is an automatic thing to where all of these lines are automatically put on your chart. We have our ABCs, our ABCD extensions, and then even some retracement values and um, the middle zone is 38.2 to 61.8. This zone is 78.6 to 88.6. Uh, and then these are labeled down below. And then the one right next to it is more of a line to show if we were going from here to here because once we got to here, got this bar, we would use something like this to determine where our retracement or where our sea level might be to stop, to extend, or, or if it breaks through these levels, where we might go. Uh, I'm no expert in harmonics. I, uh, I don't really use the harmonics so much in my trading, but... Uh, I do use these tools on occasion just to see various FIB levels. Okay, so let's nuke everything off of our chart. With all of my products, I provide a, an icon in NinjaTrader's toolbar for the product. This little pencil right here represents our draw bar. This little color palette right here represents our color style palette. 
as with everything, if I middle click these icons, I can hide them from my chart if I wish. Now, if I middle click that again, I bring it back. If I left click this icon, it's going to bring up another window and this window is where I am going to select what draw objects I want to put in this bar. So you're not limited to what I have here. Um, there's quite a few more. Everything that you're going to, to see in your drawing tool is going to be displayed in here other than um, in some cases my custom drawing tools are going to be in replace of the defaults if you're looking at the ultimate version. So I don't show, I mean, if I clicked on here on diamond, you can see that the diamond comes back up. If I click on all of these, you'll notice that they instantly appear in my draw bar. If you want to use these, just select them, click close, and you're good to go. I don't use any of these. I don't use the arc of uh, the draw objects brings up the draw objects property and all I have to do is double click on any of them to bring that up. I don't use a fib circle. So I kind of have this set the way that I want to see this on my chart. Make whatever changes you want and click close. The check updates for these windows doesn't work. I ended up putting the check updates in the control center. If you go to the control center help, you'll see I took trading analysis at the very bottom. There's various things that you can do from there. And uh, I don't quite have the select all and the unselect all working in this. I do have it working in the color style bar. And then once I got it working there, I said, ooh, I don't know if I want to use it or not. Very rarely would I unselect everything or select everything. I think by default it comes up with most, I'm not sure anymore, comes up with most everything selected. The first thing you're going to want to do is left click that and select whatever you want. I'll, um, I'll probably fix this shortly, but if I'll show you, I'll show you the possible problem with that in the, in the color style bar. So this is easy enough. We'll close this. We'll take a look at the color style bar. We'll show it on our chart. We'll left click it. Now, I am not sure if I had all of the colors uh, included when I did the first basic video, but even in the uh, even in the basic version, all of these colors are now. If I click on a color, it's going to automatically instantly add it to my to my color style bar. I can I can show or hide the styles. Um, see in a, in a text. I also allow you to adjust the text and we have normal, italicized. I, I don't use any of this text. Uh, that's why it's all um, unchecked. And the opacity is for uh, circles, rectangles, draw regions where you have a color. Let's show you that. I believe I might have. If I draw this, turn this on, change this to red, change this to dashed, and click on this. Now click again. This changes to what I have selected. If I come up and I change my opacity, you can see that I can automatically change the opacity of the color behind some of my shapes. So that's pretty simple. Select the colors we want, select the size, style, however we want. Now, these do work. And if I were, I'm, I'm not going to do this. If I were going, if I were to select all, every one of those colors is going to be selected and go across your chart. But then if I unselect all, they're all going to go away. Now, the problem with that is I don't necessarily remember exactly what colors I have there and I don't want to have to go through and line this back up so I'm not going to do that. Okay, 
next. Let's look at the properties of both of these indicators. If we go into the draw bar, there is a, I give you a top offset and a left offset for where the placement of where you want the toolbar to be. Okay, let's close this. Let's hide this for a second. Now, what we mean by that is that if you want to see your descriptions of the indicators you have loaded on your chart, all we have to do is go up to the top offset and let's say that we want that 50 pixels off of the top. I click apply. It is now down. Do the same thing to the left. Below, I give you the, uh, a checkbox here to place it on the left-hand side. If I check that box and click apply, we now place it on the left-hand side of the chart instead of the top part of the chart. If I want to scoot this all the way back up to the top, I can do that. If I want to, the same thing is going to be for the color style. So right now, I only have the ability to place it either on the top or the left, but I give you the ability to move that around pretty much however you would like to see it. With, let's, because this is the way I like looking at it. Yeah. Let's go back to the default. I give you a chart trader icon and a show trades icon. If we left click the chart trader icon, we're going to turn the chart trader icon on and you can select what you want that to mean. And when we turn it off, you can select what you want that to mean. And the reason why I do this is because you might want to turn Chart Trader completely off, or you might want to chart to to take it to hidden, so that you're only looking at so that you're still looking at the executions on your chart. Um, I just give you the ability to do either. And then we have a snap mode icon, which I'm not showing, but again we give you the ability to set what the off and the on means. In all of my products, I stick an icon up here on the top. Now, depending on the theme and the skin that you're using for NinjaTrader, you might want to change the colors and the backgrounds of what they look like when they're hidden and when they're not to match your skin. Now, in the draw bar, we actually give you the ability to change the toolbar's background color and hidden colors as well. That's kind of one thing that I didn't show earlier is that if I right click any one of these icons, though all of those objects are going to um, be hidden on my chart, they're not gone, they're hidden. I mentioned earlier that I did a couple um, videos on the basic versions of the draw bar on the color bar and these all of these basic functionalities that are in those are included in this. I might suggest that maybe you take a look at those as well. Okay so now let's go back into the properties and uh, make sure we didn't miss anything here. Uh, we can change the font of our price labels and pretty much I believe everything down below is default. At the very bottom you'll see the version number of uh, the product that you're on. Right now I'm on version 18 of, of this. Um, also in the visual, if you want to hide the description of the indicator from your chart, just click this under visual, hide text label click apply and that will no longer be on your chart. Now let's take a look at the color style portion of it. 
we'll go up to the top and we have the same offsets as we do for the drawbar. The reason why it's on 22 right now is 22 is perfect to be right below the drawbar, which is what it's set on default. If, if you're buying just the basic version of, well, actually, there isn't a basic version of the color style bar. There's no unique difference between the standalone version of the color style bar and the color style bar version that's included in the ultimate version. So we can place it on the left and we can offset it anywhere we need on the chart. So if you have something else you need to display there, you can put it wherever you want. Again, the same, uh, the same thing here for a high text label. Same thing here for version. We're on version 19 already of the color style bar. Um, and then your colors for both the toolbar icon and the toolbar itself. I know I kind of skipped all over. I believe I covered everything of pertinence. Um, if you take a look on my website in the product description, you, it, I, I give you a little spreadsheet that shows you all of the properties that are available for each of the, of the draw objects in the indicator. I was just trying to keep this short and sweet. Let me take, uh, let me take just a minute to show you how I might use this. Let's delete all of that and let's show, let's show some, some bars here. I, I tend to believe that the market moves in ranges. I'm just going to play here for just a second and uh, kind of right off the bat, that's kind of what. Let's. Uh, That looks pretty good without uh, without spending too much time on it. I'm even going to show the midpoint. Whoops. So I'm seeing the market move from here to here, back up to here, to here, back to here, to here, to here. So I'm trying to play between the levels. That's why most of all of my uh, all of my draw objects have a 50 and 100 percent extension. Okay, and then from a fib perspective, if we go from here to here to here, ah, we're pretty close for uh, for just guessing. This is kind of how I would go back and analyze it, and why I have uh, the various properties in each one of these. Okay, let's get rid of all of that. Do this. Let's uh, let's draw red. Let's draw from here to say here. Let's left click on that and extend it right. And we can see that we came right back up into the supply area that I just drew. And now this will be on my chart forever. Well, till it breaks either to the upside or till something happens. But I should have had that on my chart to begin with when price was reaching this area earlier. We would do, um, let's do this. Let's double click this. Let's come down into templates. And let's say save. And let's save this as our default template and say OK. So that now, even if I have that draw bar turned off, or the color style turned off, the next time that I draw these, they'll all be drawn the same way. Now I can come back, turn my color style palette on, turn that to green, and come down and click on these. Now notice that, okay, on, on most all of them, if you're extending to the right and we click here, you can see real quick where the actual rectangle is. I am not actually changing where you drew your the original object. I'm just taking it and extending it to the right. 
So if you want to select on that object, you have to actually go back inside the object, the start to the end that you drew. Now that would be on a rectangle or a line or anything. You can't click outside of the extension and select that object. Um, what were we doing? We were changing that to green and we were changing that to green real quick and you know just some quick quick easy supply and demand zones it's extremely versatile and however you however you'd like to set that up we showed this earlier um, if I if I have this stay and draw mode on or I click on this you can see as I come down that I have a pencil on my chart if I decide that I don't want to draw anymore or I accidentally click this up here just right click on your mouse and that pencil will go away so now if we came over here and we extended that right and we showed our um, we showed our anchor points and we showed our price labels we took a look at where we're at now still got a long way to go let's um, let's take a look where the hundred percent projection was on that well that kind of I mean quick dirty you know let's look for it to come back here and see what it wants to do you know that and that but that's just one possibility and this was pretty quick and dirty but it gives you some ideas of what you can do uh, I think I've covered most of everything um, as always guys thanks very much for your time and let me know if you have any questions